as I find myself picking up the pieces of a broken life and responsible now for honoring my father's legacy. I can't help but think what must be going through my brother's mind. I love my brother and, and I care about him deeply. Whatever happens in, in the military and, and being a victim of the system, being accused of things that for the most part he didn't do and being persecuted as such, um, it's been very difficult um, for any of us to get along with him and we've been supportive and to think he has some sort of notion that um, I'm now going to be forced to sell this house is, is couldn't be further from the truth. I have no intention of selling this house and I have every intention of saving the studio and he just doesn't seem to see it as an asset. Um, nor could he have been responsible enough when my father and I spoke um, about uh, what would happen after he died. And, and um, so whatever portion that the judge feels he's entitled to, which I, I don't believe he's entitled to anything, um, will, will play out in court. And uh, unfortunately, I'm, I've been trying to make a deal. Um, I've been trying to... Um, come up with, uh, you know, some type of uh, explanation to him to, some, to understand if the house is, is uh, at best probably worth a little under 300000 It's The mortgage is about 225000 So the equity there is about seventy five. If you split that 50 per 50, which it's, it wouldn't be 50-50, um, you'd have to subtract the 20000 I paid already on the mortgage and about 10 to 15,000 approximately in taxes that my wife and I paid on the property that were owed plus the closing costs um, it would leave his 50% portion with, with really nothing and he's definitely not entitled to uh, a 50% once that's calculated so I would like to offer him some of the some of the items here you know, as a deal to try to facilitate the court process to speed it along rather than dragging it out and making it more expensive and more costly for everyone. Um, and this would help me to move on with renting the room out here and, and getting the, the, the house um, so that it can be, um, so that it can be um, rented out. It's, it's a mess with clutter and um, unfortunately mice infestations and um, being the, the nurse and caregiver for my father w w while taking care of the house and, and, and going back and forth constantly, it was very difficult to attend to this house. And there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And like my father wrote in the will, him and Andreas had a discussion. And Andreas uh, told him that he has no interest in maintaining this house. He told him that the house is bullshit, which my mom and dad worked hard for their whole lives and, and me as well. Um, and he told him his art's bullshit, which is, which is unfortunate, he's telling people, it's unsellable. Well, in order to sell art, you really have to market it, and you have to pay for advertising, and you have to network, and it's very difficult. And as you can see, my father was a wonderfully magnificent, fabulous artist, and um, we had very little time to market the art. And I would like to help, as much as my brother has done some really cruel and mean things to me, I still care about him, and, and I would like to help him, but... He just doesn't seem to get that he's already cost me a lot of money um, and, and aggravation and pain and, and uh, stress as it is. Um, and he's just made one lie after another. And that's what he told us the day my dad said, I'm going to make your life miserable. And, you know, he's threatening my, my wife and I saying, oh, you know, th th this is where he's going to stay for free so we can save up some money. And, and so come and go as he pleases it. I... I I've known him my whole life, and as many other people can can attest to, he's just totally narcissistic, doesn't care, never once um, even grieved the loss of my dad. He was happy that he was gone. He, he was able now to take and steal whatever he wanted, and, and uh, just, just like he treated my father, just wanted everybody to, to feel sorry for him as if he was the victim somehow, and, and that we are we are somehow responsible or that my father was abusive to him and um, made, made his life miserable and somehow um, 
it wasn't him who did all these things, and he would have folks believe that uh, it wasn't him who squandered my, my father's fortune, uh, small fortune, um, on lawyers. Um, he would have folks believe that he, he deployed and that because he has an honorable discharge, that he's this glorious veteran. And yeah, I respect him for being a paratrooper, but he had had enough of that. And, and uh, whatever happened to him in the military traumatized him. And um, my parents ended up having to pay lawyers for that to get him out of Walter Reed, but he'd have folks believe otherwise and, and have people uh, think that my wife and I are these horrible people um, saying really disgusting things about my wife and I and, and um, just telling people these, these lies. And, and that's perjury, you know, to, to, to deny the fact that you know, your dad um, and, and me and my uncle and, 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 and my dad's friends, we all had to go to court because and, and, he refused to leave back in 2009, 2013, 2019. I, uh, all these times he, he would try to force his way in here and assault my dad. And, and it's all on record, it's all on public record, and it's just a shame that um, he still feels that he's entitled to somehow um, try to take whatever he can. And, you know, honestly, I would like to offer him, there's, there's a lot of tools here and, and furniture and those sort of things. Um, he is, has expressed no interest whatsoever in any of the artwork, um, but I know that he's, he's dealing with a pretty difficult set of cards in life. Um, Having a felony and, and uh, you know not really being able to, to have a regular job is unfortunate, and, and folks like him really deserve a second chance. And uh, I've told him, look, you can explain uh, what your your legal record is when you go for a job application. You can explain that, but well, listen, to me. What you, I told him you could get health insurance, you can get Obamacare. He, he said, <laughs> didn't listen, and we just send a bill to my dad and go to the dentist, the doctor, just send a bill to my dad, and the dad's gonna pay for it. And that was his attitude, as if, oh, I'm supposed to just let him come and go and please his whole hours a night while I'm working very hard to save this house and pay the bills, the heat, the electricity, the mortgage, the internet, the gas, the propane, the oil, you know, the garbage collection, all these bills I'm responsible for. I'm the one paying these. There's not a free ride. <laughs> and, uh, you know, my dad did the best not to spoil my brother, but that's, that's what... He ended up doing because we felt sorry for him because the system, uh, the legal justice system, is is uh, is not exactly fair um, in a lot of instances, and and especially when you are accused of things that you didn't do or charged with things um, that really shouldn't be illegal or shouldn't be a crime, and uh, you don't have money to, to to lawyer up, so to speak. Um, so, uh, unfortunately. Um, you know, if this does drag out, it's just going to take longer for me to provide funding to facilitate the business and um, and to, uh, you know, pay for advertising and, and to uh, get the house in, in shape enough where I can rent out a room or two here. Um, and, you know, maybe someday down the line rent out a room to my brother, but uh, he doesn't seem to realize that the house is already mortgaged. There's some art here. There's some furniture and some tools. And there's two cars sitting in my driveway that I can't use because they were in my dad's name. <laughs> one of them doesn't run, and the other one just barely runs. We barely got it fixed the last few weeks before he died. That it's in my dad's name, and, and without the death certificate and the, the court thing being finalized, I can't, I can't sell them or use those cars. So I've been without reliable transportation and, and struggling here um, and, and being obligated to go to court because he's lying to, to say to, 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 to people that he lives here or that that his stuff was damaged or that uh, he has a right to be here. I mean, he, he really doesn't. And unfortunately, my dad did not get a official, like, notarized uh, will going because it was a pandemic. He was very sick with cancer, and we thought he had more time, literally. And at the very last minute, we could not afford to pay a couple thousand dollars to have some attorney come into the emergency room. And, and these are the kinds of things, honestly, um, you know, my dad and I were not lawyers. We, we, we thought that that handwritten will with a couple signatures on it and the video would be would suffice. 
Um, but apparently not, especially because my brother refused to acknowledge that. And, and, and to make up some story to say that that was coerced or whatever, that's such BS. It's, it's, there's overwhelming proof witnesses of people who are friends of my father, close friends of our family, and, and even strangers and neighbors who know that I was the only one here taking care of my dad and that my dad wanted me to have the house because I was the only one who was responsible that doesn't have a felony who can hold down a job, who has a college degree, okay? My parents pay for Andreas to college and he flunked out. He failed. He couldn't even do that. He kept getting in trouble over and over again by hanging out with the wrong kind of crowd, the wrong kind of people. And nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect either, okay? But I loved my parents and I took care of them. And he doesn't seem to see this as an asset. This is a beautiful house. There's a lot of beautiful artwork here. We had a very good childhood. We were very close growing up, you know. And, and unfortunately, cancer has really devastated our, our family and an unfair legal system as well. That made a lot of problems for us as kids. But I got out of Dodge. I, I, I traveled. I lived overseas. I, I, I was very independent my whole life. Um, which is the opposite pretty much for Andreas. Andreas was just a little kid, and I had to basically be the one to chop wood and heat the house and, and take care of a father with ulcerative colitis who ends up having his whole rectum and colon removed by the time I was about 13 years old. Okay, so I had to be the man of the house at a young age. So I've always been independent and responsible, and that's why my father left the house to me and not my brother. This is not about spite. This is not about sickly jealousy or rivalry. This is about someone who was abusive to his brother and his father and who thinks that he, he is entitled and that he's the victim and that somehow everybody owes him something. And he's so delusional. He seems to think that dragging this whole thing out of probate that he's going to really get something out of it. Whatever portion that he's uh, 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 allotted, which is just, just completely wrong in my eyes, but I guess because there's that, that citation in the book, um, you know, on paper that because it wasn't notarized that he's entitled to some portion. But whatever portion that is, I'm willing to offer him more than that portion would even be in certain things that he might find an interest to, like some of the printers or the camera equipment, most of which he stole, and some of the furniture or even some of the artwork because um, he, he doesn't seem to realize that um, it, it's, it's really not um, gonna, gonna end up where he gets 50% a, a of, of the equity of this house because I've been paying the mortgage and the taxes were close to $15,000. So if you take $15,000 and you subtract it from $30,000, okay, you're, you're left with 20000 right? And then if you take all the mortgage that I've been paying for the past, like, nine months, that's close to 10000 Plus all the repairs that I've done over the years and the closing costs, there's really nothing left. And he just doesn't understand that. So he seems to think that it's okay for him to just continually be abusive and to be um, with this attitude that, you know, he should come and go when he pleases, and I should just let him stay here, and, you know, that that doesn't work, and that didn't work when my dad was alive, and, and it, it cost my dad so much pain. This whole house just stopped when my dad got cancer. Everything you can see, um, and, and my dad blames my brother for getting cancer, getting my mama, that's written down to, and, and I talked to my dad at length. He said, I lost my wife, I retired. And then I saw my youngest son in jail, and um, that broke his heart, and it broke the bank, and any kind of uh, efforts that he was trying to make to make any more art just halted and stopped because he was very sick. He had fractures in his spine. He was in a wheelchair, and his son kept getting in trouble, and so for the past five years or so, um, in between uh, intense uh, caring for my dad, and I mean, I, I had him on an exercise regimen, a diet, and he had some remission there. Um, in between doing that, um, we established a business, and the painting behind me is one of the last things he was ever able to make, and he tried to make it in a studio that was filled with clutter and mostly garbage, junk, and clothes. Um, none of the equipment that my brother 
uh, left here without permission is damaged, and 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 none of his stuff um, that is in boxes uh, is, is 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 it's mostly clothes and toys and crap that he stole my dad's credit card to pay for uh, um, is damaged or missing either. And um, it's just sad because I made every effort um, with my father after my mom died to publish the book and to, to get the prints and get a business going. And while he was in remission, it, uh, due, due to uh, stem cell, two stem cell transplants and immunotherapy, we were able to establish Boffy Studio Fine Art and Boffy Studio Fine Art Gallery, Interior Design Solutions. Um, however, unfortunately, because of all the methotrexate, he was given as chemotherapy before immunotherapy, it damaged the cellular structure and the DNA inside his cells that promotes the production of new red blood cells and hemoglobin. So he, um, about six months uh, before he died, he was given some bad news. Um, we were constantly going back and forth to get blood transfusions and blood tests every week, and then he had fractures in his shoulders. It was horrific. And so this whole time, um, he was corresponding with his friend Debbie Bell, who had sent him a, a will to print out. And as you can see, the printer broke, and um, we didn't, uh, we weren't able to print it out. And so I feel like we're being unfairly penalized because of that. Um, and my brother is taking advantage of that, which is really sad. He just doesn't seem to realize that. Yeah, we do care about him, even though he's done some really bad things to me and my father. And he's made me grieving, the grieving process terrible, even with my mother, who died in this room holding my hand. He was horrible right up until the day she died. She would say, oh, your brother just doesn't understand how sick I am. He'd violently attack me and be brawling, and it was just horrible. And that's been going on since 2003. So... He, uh, I mean, there's letters and, 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 and documents showing that he was not living here and that he was kicked out of here and that my father restricted his license to live here. I mean, it, this, is, this is just going down memory lane. I'm finding all these documents and letters of how horribly abusive he was to my dad. And I feel bad for him because he got PTSD. He was in the Army, and, and, and he was bullied in school, and, and, and he just seems to have a problem getting along with people. And we've, we're worried that, that, that he is not going to make it. And so um, I'm in a position now where I'm trying to do the best I can to save the house and trying to do the best I can to sell some artwork, um, but I'm being blocked. I'm being, I'm being prevented from doing so and, and, and tied up with this uh, illegal matter that, that shouldn't have be happening in the first place while grieving the loss of someone extremely special and close to me. So thanks for your help. Uh, I appreciate you, my friends calling me up, and I, I know most of you are struggling too financially. Uh, but for those of you who've, who've helped out, I, I really appreciate it. It's it's been extremely difficult um, for me, um, and for those of you who know what it's like to take care of your only family um, while they're sick with cancer, I think you can relate. Um, if you've never had to take care of someone who's very sick with this horrible disease. Um, or, or any horrible disease for that matter. I don't think you can relate um, to what it's like, how debilitating it is, and um, especially for all the complications that my, my dad had. I mean, I, I, I had to give him injections and monitor his medications and, and massage him and watch what he ate. He had gout, he had a, a large aorta, he had swollen legs, an ileostomy. Um, I mean, his, his eyesight, his hearing, when he had fractures, he was in constant pain. It was really, really difficult um, to see him suffer and to be told, uh, oh, well, why don't you just, you know, forget about him or, or why don't you just go do your own thing? I couldn't do that to my dad. So here I am, I have a bachelor's degree. I work my ass off like I always have, and I'm struggling. Um, and, uh, you know, family, you know, supposed to help each other. And uh, it's sadly, a lot of people talk a lot of hippy-dippy bullshit about family and love, but they really don't care. <laughs> They're just out to have a good time. And there's nothing wrong with that, but, you know, when push comes to so shove, you know, you can't choose your family, you can choose your friends. And uh, love is real. Love lasts forever and doesn't go away. And as, as, as mean and cruel as my father's family was to him, as my, my brother has been to us, um, I, I still want to help him. And I'm not, 
I'm not trying to um, paint him, put him in a bad light, um, but I think folks think I'm rich. Some people think, you know, maybe because I have white privilege or because I'm educated or because je parle français, that uh, I, I've always, and, and, and I've, because I've worked very hard my whole life, that I've somehow had this um, life, lavish lifestyle, which I couldn't be further from the truth. Um, everything I've had, I've worked very hard for. And my father left it up to me to take care of my brother. And taking care of my brother does not mean allowing him to come and go as he pleases here and to abuse us and to cause more damage. Um, he's put holes in the walls here that I've had to cover up and plaster and, and, and brought people here who jumped in my father's bed. And you know who I'm talking about. I'm not going to mention your name because you had an order of protection taken against, against him and, and you don't seem to want to get involved. But he's brought people over here in the middle of the night screaming and yelling when my father was sick. And um, my father just couldn't take it anymore and eventually had the police get him out of here. And, and we had to go to court and, and, and do all this. So the, the, to entertain the notion that I'm somehow responsible for taking care of someone who's belligerent and abusive by letting him stay here um, is just ridiculous. Um, and it's not going to help him um, to be here with, with, with me because he doesn't like me, he doesn't appreciate me. He's never asked me a single question about me or how I'm doing or about my life. Um, in over 20 years, he's never once sat down and said, hey, Ali, let's talk and let's have something. But I've always helped him. I've always ran to his rescue when he was getting thrown out from his apartment or he was in trouble somewhere or needed my help or needed some money. And yet he refuses to believe that. <laughs> he thinks, seems to think that, oh, no, I didn't hand him money that I made. I didn't do that. You know, oh, Dad didn't write that will. You know, it's like whatever can serve his own type of delusional agenda he does and it's just sad so have some empathy for me please take a look at the beautiful artwork my dad made okay this my artwork is, is you know is, is nowhere as good as, as my father's um but uh you know um take a look and, and have some empathy we were good people uh, my mother and father they worked their whole life just to have this beautiful house in the country and I'm not going to let a mentally ill sibling try to force me into selling something. And I hope the judge has some um, morals and some decency, some fairness in his heart to understand the situation. Um, because I know not everything was done by the book, um, but it was done with the intention of, of honoring my father's legacy, saving everything that he worked very hard for and and leaving me with a nice collection of artwork. It's a lot of debt, inherited a lot, a lot of debt. And uh, yeah, so that's what's going on in my world. Every day is still an Ollie day. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And um, if anyone wants to help me edit some of the videos, I. Just try to make people laugh and, and that goofy. Please, uh, by all means, uh, leave me a message in the comments. But um, thank you, thank you kindly for your support. I know I'm not the only one whose family has been devastated by cancer. So um, thanks.